Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Emro Hassan. I'm uh, the tools engineer uh, for the project management office and also the, uh, uh, the project manager for the core tool and development, uh, core technology and, and tools. Um, this is a fairly uh, quick topic, but it serves as under the hood for the previous topic that Anoop just presented. So basically, this just covers how uh, Anoop and I and myself did the automation for uh, populating the spreadsheet from Jira uh, using JavaScript. So uh, it's a fairly short presentation, but going through it quickly, uh, I need to just go quickly on the problem. So um, I want to define the problem here. The problem, if uh, we wanted to um, collect some metrics from JIRA so it can be used by the managers and the, and the directors and the team leads to view exactly the health of the project. How are we doing? And the challenge comes from when we're working from home, we need to have at least one uh, source of truth that is accurate enough for us to look at and judge if things are up to date or not, uh, which is JIRA in this case. Um, so quickly, uh, so JIRA is not Git, and this has been a problem for us. We want to look at JIRA and find the status of an issue. How was it a week ago or a year ago or a month ago? And JIRA doesn't provide that out of the box. And hence, we had to find some way to hack it or uh, provide a uh, scripting or a plugin that we have to custom develop to get that done for us. Um, so we're always seeking integrity of the content of what we have in our issues uh, or work items, uh, the descriptions, the links, the fixed versions, all these things. We try and strive to make it up to date as much as we can and um, to be able to look at a glance and judge if a project is in a good health or not. So when Anu um, started this great initiative, uh, he started, uh, I think, a year ago, he spent a whole lot of time going and updating the spreadsheet with the, uh, the results from the filters he created to track his project's health. And that was a manual uh, and tedious job, and it took him a long time. So uh, he kept asking for help, and I didn't have time to help until uh, a month ago we figured out how to do it. So because Jira doesn't have a history, the only way to do it is we have to create one for Jira. And ba that's basically done by taking a snapshot of the numbers coming back from the filters that uh, Anu covered in the last session. And then we're going to be able to trend and collect these numbers and look at it plot it and look at that graph and see how our projects are doing. Um, so um, Anoop spent a lot of time going and copying things from the filters to the spreadsheet. And uh, basically, he runs the filter for each one of uh, his projects, and he pastes it uh, to update the spreadsheet, as I mentioned. And when we thought of an automation way to do it, there was uh, at least uh, three options that we've gone through. So this is basically, this is uh, the whole presentation is to cover the, 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 the fastest and the easiest way we have found to do it. Uh, the first option we looked at was to develop a, a plugin for Jira or write a script in Groovy or, or Java uh, which is a Jira native language, to, um, to do that job. But we have to pull a lot of dependencies uh, to, uh, because if we want to communicate with Google Docs from Jira, we have, there's the only way to do it is using the open authentication protocol. And the packages in Java are a nightmare to maintain. Uh, the second option with a Python script, and in that case, I would give it to Anup or anybody interested to do this, to run it, but the problem is for any non-technical users, he will have to know how to set his uh, Python environment, and that wasn't um, a preferred issue or a preferred approach to do it unless we uh, couldn't find a simpler uh, solution. 
And the final one that we luckily found in the link provided below is a, a contribution from um, a guy called Ian Brown, who is uh, very nice. Uh, he shared that in his blog, uh, and the link is provided here. And that is basically, he uses um, Google's script app, uh, which is a JavaScript platform in the cloud. It enables you to extend all Google applications in any way you want. You can uh, integrate with external systems and do a whole lot of things. And that doesn't only cover the, uh, uh, the sheets. We can do it for the calendars and everything else. And uh, the beauty of it, it's so easy, and it's dynamically linked. Once you open the, uh, the, the spreadsheet, you can do it. And um, if you go to the link and, and look at the sample code and the sample script, uh, spreadsheet that that guy uh, shared, uh, and looking at the snapshot down here, which is uh, copy two of Jira backlog, the, uh, all the menu items, file, edit, view, insert, up to help, are the default one that come with the spreadsheet. The, two, the last two, Jira and story cards, are uh, created by, uh, through JavaScript. And to get to that from the tools, uh, menu item here, you click and go to the script editor, and then you just use the uh, classes that are dynamically linked, provided, and they're available in all uh, Google uh, applications. And you can use these classes and do whatever magic you want to do using JavaScript. And it makes the life way too easy. And it was definitely the way to go, uh, rather than going through a ni maintenance nightmare for Java or a Python and so on. So basically, uh, sample classes here that are used, uh, if you follow the link and see um, how did Ian Brown did it, he just uh, used the script app and property service and utilities classes, which are very simple to use. And the steps that he did that was, was to uh, add the new menu items and then prompt the user uh, to uh, provide his credentials. Unfortunately, it's not um, encrypted. It's, it uses a digest algorithm, which is one way. Uh, he converts the text of, uh, of his password and username into uh, hash. and uh, for us in Lenaro, all that is done within the Google domain. So there is no security issue that we shouldn't be uh, uh, scared of in this case or uh, afraid to fall into. So uh, once that is done, uh, the, the code, that it's a very sh fairly uh, short piece of code that you write to build a REST request using the credentials and the target server provided by the user and then um, execute the REST call to Jira REST API, get the return JSON from the filters you want to uh, query, and populate the spreadsheet automatically. So if I go back to that slide, uh, once that is done, if I click here on Jira, it should show a uh, sync, uh, sync uh, spreadsheet. And once you click that, you'll find the numbers um, automatically populated and suddenly the, the, the execution time or the maintenance times that was spent by Anub shrinks from, from uh, four or five or hours that you used to do into around a couple of minutes and we're all done and set. So this is basically the best and the, the recommended way that I found to use it as long as you don't intend to share that spreadsheet with really external stakeholders who don't have access to your company's domain, which is in this case within Google. Um, and I don't think the, the issue, the Google are not going to, they're not going to use a, a poor digest algorithm to uh, convert the, the, the text or the plain text of the password into uh, a hash map so that this can be backward, uh, you know, uh, decrypted to figure out what, what uh, the password is. So this is fairly uh, robust. Um, and then that would do it, and voila, you'll be done in a couple of minutes, uh, as opposed to having a plugin that you will maintain or having a script in Python that's going to take a long time. So this is a very, very short uh, topic that serves as under the hood for the previous session provided by Anoop, just to show if anybody's interested, 
in integrating or pulling data from JIRA into a spreadsheet or a Google Doc. He can use their uh, uh, Google Script app uh, to do whatever he wants. And it's fairly simple JavaScript. It's so easy. And um, that's it. It's so short. Uh, so any questions? Uh, thank you so much. So the links are provided in the, uh, in the slides, and you can take a look at uh, what the source code that Ian Brown shared, and it saved a lot of time. So thank you so much.